All right, now before we mount, before we mount our vertical and horizontal that we've built, we need to address uh, our push rods. How are we going to do push rods for uh, controlling the rudder and the elevator surfaces? Well, there's different ways of doing this. Uh, an acceptable way, you know, we, we can do, we can think outside of the box with airplanes like this. It's, you know, it's our own design. We can do whatever we want to do with it. I've seen people with balsa airplanes um, take on the foamy way of mounting a servo, which for you guys that are, this is your first balsa build, uh, well, you can do it just like you would a foamy. Pop your servo in, just cut out a, a spot, recess your servo in, and just run your push rod all the way to the back, to the control surface. Um, probably the most generally accepted way of doing push rods is to take a piece of dowel, uh, whether it be like this, a pine dowel or some balsa, um, and cut it to a length that you feel comfortable with, and then take your music wire, um, I generally, on small stuff like this, I like to use a .047 size music wire, but you can put a 90 degree bend in it, you know, right toward the end, drill a hole with a small drill bit right through the push rod, about, oh, about an inch back or so, and then insert that in, and then wrap it with thread, hit it with some CA, and now you've got a push rod. Do that on each end. you got one that you mount to the servo and the other one to the control horn for your control surface. Now, I'm going to do things a little bit differently. I actually weighed this uh, and then weighed my, my uh, .047 music wire and found it to be actually a little bit lighter. And I'm all about weight, trying to get it as light as I can. So what I did was took some old... Uh, outer push rod material from back in my nitro days. This is just Sullivan push rod outer casing and I just cut a short length of that and then drilled a hole so it would set in there, put it in at an angle, cut it away, sanded it, I got a little bit of spackle around there. Uh, did that on both sides and one for elevator, one for rudder. And then midway, it's going to be kind of hard to see here, but midway through the fuselage I put a piece of scrap balsa and two short sections of that same material. You can buy this stuff at your local hobby shop or look around and find some plastic tubing that you think is you know, going to work. This stuff is actually quite a bit large, but I was able to use it uh, with a little slop at all. The reason that we're going to do this, um, this stuff will work just fine. The reason we're going to do this uh, in the center here, we need it to be supported every few inches so that the rod doesn't flex. And just by having that little bit of support in there, that'll keep the rod from flexing. Now we'll put one through each side, and hopefully you'll be able to see this. But I'll be able to put in my servo, and then, yeah, this is going to be, there we go. I'll be able to put in my servos, and I'll be able to run my, my rod right down the middle for the servos to, to latch onto there. And I'll do that on each side. Um, that's the way I'm doing it, and I wanted to take a moment to, uh, to show you that. So now you kind of got a little bit of an idea. We'll probably do a whole show on, uh, or a whole video, I guess, on different push rod techniques as time goes, because I want to show you guys the things that I've learned over the years. But those are uh, just a few simple ways of, of doing push rods, and I'll leave that to your own preference on how you want to pull it off. Whether you go inside or outside, make sure that your push rod is rigid enough that you don't have any flex. If I was to use this 047 music wire without any supports, like I put here in the middle, well then it would flex, and under a load, you know, it would just bend. I've seen this mistake many times, and if it, if it bends, well then, uh, you know, you're going to have an airplane crash. <laughs> so you need it to be rigid, and the way you get the rigidity is either using bigger stock that won't bend, or keep it light and just support it every three to four inches, and that'll, that'll keep it from, from flexing away on you and losing control of your airplane. Now that we have our push rod uh, situation figured out, like I've done on this particular plane, um, we're ready to mount the stabilizers at the rear. Now the, with this particular design, um, remember I had you notch the top of the fuse, and you've already got the sides notched per your templates, uh, the sides of the fuse notched. Well now, since we've you know, glued this together 90 degrees, 
all we have to do is slide this right up and in place just like that now just a quick double check you know when we when we drilled our hole to mount our wing then we made certain that we had the distance from the wing tip to the tail of the fuselage we made sure that we had those pretty close to being equal when I say close mine came out to be about a 16th inch difference and honestly that's just fine the next thing we want to do with this is try to you know check the same different uh, distances we want to check from the wing tip to the tip of the horizontal stem kind of make sure that that's within you know acceptable range about a sixteenth of an inch for something like this um, in which case you know in this in this particular situation I've already checked it and made certain that it is okay the next thing we want to do though is we want to tip it up we want to see are we level um, are we parallel I'll try to get this here are we parallel with our horizontal to our wing and once you've got that figured out and you know that you are parallel well then you're ready to glue it basically you can take your pen I'll grab one here you can take your your pen and just draw yourself a reference line on the top and the bottom and I'll see if I can basically catch it for the camera but I'm just taking my felt tip and just making a little white little, little light line and by doing this we can see where we need to put glue we can also do that on our vertical um, there and right here and again you know we know that we're dealing with eighth inch stuff we can know that we need to put a little line of glue beneath this and a little line of glue on each side of the line there and again my lighting is really crummy but you know put our line of glue and then once we've got it glued top and bottom got a little bit of glue in there then we can just slide it back in double check our you know our measurements make sure we're still parallel and basically you know clamp it in here I put a little wood clamps there just to kind of hold that top part but anyway let that glue set up and dry which is what I'm going to do next um, if you don't have it parallel you know maybe you've got it you know a little bit wompy jawed and <laughs> maybe it's this or or the other way all you have to do to remedy that is to just lightly sand um, these mounting parts here on the horizontal to you know get it to where you can get it you know get it level that's really all you have to do now if you end up with a little slop well once you've got it glued then just you know clamp everything in place as it dries and it's going to be just fine so that's the mounting of the horizontal and the vertical stabs we're in a position now where the next thing we're ready to do is cover it I'm not going to do videos on covering these because there are videos all over the internet for using your heat shrink covering um, and if you buy a roll of monocoat the instructions included with top flight monocoat teach you pretty much everything you need to know in a little one page uh, flyer so I guess our next video will talk about the installation of our electronics so we'll see you then